so only one more thing to do in this set of slides. I'm going to define now so-called forward rates. And the reason, I'm not going to really be using them much right now, but when we come to stochastic random modeling of interest rates, we will see that one of the popular uh, models is in fact the model which models forward rates rather than spot rates. Okay. So what is a forward rate? Let's just, just talk a little bit before we go through the details in the slide. Forward rates, the idea is that by trading bonds with different maturities today, you can actually replicate a trade which would correspond to investing one dollar sometime in the future up to some other moment in the future. Yeah? So I can get by trading different bonds with different maturities today, I can create a portfolio which invests say one dollar maybe one year from now and then pays something known deterministic two years from now. So, so the rate which corresponds to the increase of that one dollar from one year from now to the two years from now, th the rate corresponding to the increase of that money is called the forward rate. Yeah. All right. So, more formally, let's uh, let's um, let's look at the f definitions. So, let R K be the annualized spot rate for for K periods from now. Uh, and I want to define a forward rate, which is going to be denoted f i j. Let me just move this. Uh, yeah, this is going to be my forward rate. Th this is going to be the notation for the forward rate between the ith and the jth period from now. So j is larger than i. And let's say I'm compounding n times a year. Okay? So I, I, to define this, I'm going to look at my left-hand side here is how much one dollar returns in uh, j periods. Yeah? It's the usual formula, one plus rj over n. This is just from compounding to the j periods. So, so, so now I can see, you know, there is a bond maybe which uh, matures in j periods from now and this is its yield. Uh, and so this the left hand side is simply how much one dollar in that bond will uh, return to me after will be worth after uh, j periods at maturity. On the right hand side, I, I am looking at uh, investing one dollar only I for i periods, okay? maybe trading a bond which matures at i periods from now. Uh, and then after that, I, I'm going to uh, invest for the rest the, of the, um, the remaining number of periods, which, which is j minus i, uh, and uh, the number, the rate, which when I multiply like that, gives me exactly how much I can get by investing today, that one dollar for j periods, that number is called the forward rate. Yeah. So it's a natural definition. On one hand, you can do this today. You can invest your one dollar at the spot rate rj to get this much money in j periods. Uh, on the other hand, you can also invest uh, in, uh, in a bond with shorter maturity, uh, at a rate with shorter maturity. Uh, and, and then if you, if you would then invest, uh, continue to invest uh, at some uh, new bond, let's say at that time, uh, a, which would mature in j minus a periods, uh, the, 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 there would be some rate I, and from the point of view of today, we choose the number so that you know, these two match. Okay? One dollar after j periods, and this would be also one dollar after j periods, but with different, using different maturities. So uh, the, the rate, which, which is a solution to this equation, the rate fij, which is a solution to this equation, is called the forward rate. Okay, let's... Let's do a numerical example to, to, to kind of confirm that uh, indeed this, this definition makes sense. I mean, it's kind of natural, but, but let's do a numerical example. All right, so, so here is my example. I have, uh, it's going to be only zero coupon bonds here. 
uh, I have a one year zero coupon bond, costs $95, and then I have a two year zero coupon bond with costs, say, $89, and let's say compounding is done uh, just once a year to make things simple. So I, uh, and I want to compute the forward rate between uh, during the second year, so from the en end of year one uh, to the end of year two. Okay. So I'm just going to use the formula. Uh, and uh, 95 today for the one year bond, which pays 100. I'm assuming they're paying 100. Uh, that, you know, from here I can compute my R1 and happens to be 5.2632%. And then the R2 annualized, compounding once a year, 89 is the price today. So compounding for two years, one plus R2 to squared has to be 100. Uh, from this I can compute R2 and something like 6%. And then I just use my formula. Right? So I just uh, use my formula, uh, which says, this would be, in my example, this would be just 1 plus R1 over 1 to the, to the 1. So it's just 1 plus R1, which is 1 plus this. So it's 1.052632. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the right-hand side. Th th this is what I was talking about, 1 plus R1 over 1 to the 1. So that's 1.052632. Uh, so I'm writing the right-hand side, times 1 plus the forward rate over 1. And then 2 minus 1 is 1, so there's no exponent here. Has to be equal to the left-hand side, which is 1 plus uh, the, the R2 uh, over 2, uh, over R2 over 1, so which is about 6%, so 1.06 basically squared, j is 2. I solve this, and if you solve this, if I did this correctly, you should get something like 6.7416%. Okay? So this is what, what you can guarantee yourself today by trading on the one-year bond and the two-year bond at these prices. You can guarantee yourself uh, a payoff. Or if you invest $1 one year from now, you can get for that $1 uh, annual rate of 6.74%. So let's check that. Let's check that uh, through uh, an example. And, and to m just to make it more uh, uh, illuminating, let, let's assume that you are speculating, you're looking at this forward rate. Right now, you can make 6.4% for the year after today. And, and let's, let's suppose this is too high relative to what's going to happen in the future. So you are just estimating here, predicting what's going to happen in the future. And you believe F12 is too high, yeah? uh, which, which means that, uh, that the corresponding price is too low. Uh, so you want to take advantage of this. Okay? You know you can create, you can guarantee yourself this rate, uh, but you think that the rate is going to be, in fact, lower in the future. You want to take advantage of that. Okay? So this is not going to be arbitrage because you may be wrong, in which case you may lose money. But le let's let's say uh, let's say you make this prediction. Uh, what is how can you take advantage of this if you are right? Well, uh, because the the rate is too high, you you think this is the rate for for the for what you will eventually eventually get two years from now. So you want to buy the cheap bond. It would be the two year bond, paying two years from now. So so let's buy one two year bond. And so the, the way I'm going to construct here uh, my, my profit is by trying to invest a zero today and then have positive amount in the future. In the previous example, I actually had positive profit at the beginning and zero payments in the future. But it doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, these are uh, uh, just different ways of making profits, if possible. So, so, so let's buy a two-year bond because we think that forward rate is too low for the, for the period in the second year. Buying this uh, is costs uh, $89, right? So I want to sell enough of the one-year bond, exactly enough to, to get me $89. So, 
So I'm going to sell short 89 over 95 units of the one year bond. Why? Because each unit costs $95. So 89 over 95 units uh, uh, costs uh, 89 over 95 times 95, which is 89. So when I sell it, I'm going to get $89. Okay? When I sell 89 over 95 units, I'm going to get $89. Uh, which is exactly enough for me to buy the um, two-year bond, one two-year bond. Yeah. Again, uh, you could scale this in different ways, but this is one particular scale. Uh, as long as, as the initial cost is zero, uh, uh, this is what you want. Yeah. So I don't actually invest anything today, invest nothing today, uh, I, because I sell something, buy something, which offsets each other. So let's see what happens in the future. In the future, after one year, that was my short position, and I have to pay 89 over 95 times 100. I'm assuming you know, face values of 100, as I said. Uh, so that's something, 93.6842. Okay. After two years, so that was my one year bond that expires, that's over with. And then after two years, I have my one two year bond. Uh, and I will I will get $100 uh, from this position, uh, and uh, it will uh, it will uh, uh, you can compute the, the return for this. So this is the this is the return for investing 936842 after one year and receiving 100 after two years. The the return percentage return for that investment during the second year from uh, now uh, is exactly going to be this, this number that, that we compute here, the forward rate 6.7416%. If it wasn't this number, then this would be a wrong definition of the forward rate. Okay. You can check that uh, the return of investing 93.68 and getting 100 for one year is exactly 6.7416%. Uh, that's what your return is. Uh, now, Assume that you were right, and that after one year, the, the one-year spot rate is indeed less than the forward rate uh, from the point of view of the original initial time. Okay. Suppose it's less than 6.7416%. Okay. We don't know that at time zero, but after one year, we see the one-year spot rate for the second year. And suppose you were right. Suppose the forward rate was too high in the sense that now, indeed, when we come to the, to the time of one year from now, the one-year spot rate is actually less than 6.7416%. Uh, what can you do? Uh, so um, that means that the price is, uh, the price is uh, higher. Uh, so you can, uh, you can sell what at that time would be the one-year bond, right? You are sitting at one year from now. You see that the, that the rate uh, for a one-year bond is less than 6.7416%. Uh, uh, so uh, low rate means high price. You sell expensive. You sell the one-year bond. Okay? That would be the one-year bond uh, which goes from one year from now to the two years from now. But you are sitting in the future one year from now. And because, because the, the, the rate is less than this, that simply means that the price would be more than 936842, this number here. You can compute that, right? You can, you can just see that uh, the, the, the rate of exactly this much corresponds to 936842. So if the rate is less than this, the price would be uh, higher than this. Okay? So you, can, you could sell that bond, the one year bond from one year from now. You could get more than what you had to pay here after one year. And that would be positive profit. Okay? After two years, you receive $100 for your original two-year bond that you bought. And you have to pay $100 for this one that you sell after one year. That would cancel. Okay? So after two years from now, or after one year, one year from now, uh, you, the, the, so at the end of the, uh, the very end, the 100 and 100 will cancel, uh, and you would make positive profit. Okay, I'm saying here arbitrage profit. That's uh, that's really not the correct, quite correct statement because um, the the uh, you know it, it could have been different. You, you, I assume here that you were right. That that your your 
uh, that the rate uh, uh, was less than the original forward rate, but if the rate is higher than the original uh, forward rate, then you, you, would, you would lose money. So it's not really, this is a misnomer here, it's not really arbitrage profit, it's just you make profit because you happen to be right in your prediction. Okay. So just to recap, the forward rate gives you a way to guarantee yourself a uh, rate of return in, the, in some future period. Uh, and then you can speculate, if you are a trader in this market, you can speculate whether this is too high or, or not. If you think the market is wrong, which is a dangerous thinking, but if you think the market is wrong, uh, you can then construct a trade which tries to take advantage of that. And if you are right and the market was kind of wrong in its prediction of the future rates, uh, then you can make profits.